smoke weed every day Academic Sound is basically a royalty free soundtrack As long as you have your health, be thankful for it and keep away from all these drugs and stuff that the kids are pushing today. This hour on WMNH is sponsored by CGI Business Solutions, located at 5 Dartmouth Drive in Auburn. They serve all your business needs, including employee benefits planning, corporate design and business administration, investments and wealth management, and customized business insurance solutions. Their phone number is 866-841-4600 or on the web at cgibusinesssolutions.com. Bring your kitchen to life with Queen City Cabinetry, located at 87 Elm Street in the historic Sunbeam Mall in Manchester. Open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. They can be reached at 603-222-2007 or on the web at queencitycabinetrynh.com. Come see the possibilities. Queen City Cabinetry, another proud sponsor of WMNH. Come on down to the Hop Knot at 1000 Elm Street, Manchester's premier craft beer and gourmet pretzel bar. Tell us more, Trudy. We make our dough fresh every day. We make a variety of styles of pretzels and serve craft beer, cocktails, and a few bottles of wine. We do the traditional pretzel, and we have multiple flavors for that. We also do stuffed pretzels, pretzel sandwiches, free dessert pretzels and pretzel knots the hop knot in the brady sullivan plaza at 1000 elm street clementos pizzeria family friendly awesome for a date night clementos pizzeria for delivery call 603-782-8450 clementos pizzeria the best pizza in town 1875 south willow street in manchester new hampshire best cocktails around come in as friends and leave as family you are listening to WMNHLP, Manchester's radio, broadcasting at 95.3 megahertz frequency modulation from the top of 1000 Elm Street. Our studios are located at 1045 Elm Street and licensed to Manchester Public Television Service in Manchester, New Hampshire, USA. So
Welcome, everybody. Here we go. It is that time again. Matt Connerton Unleashed, and we are live from the studios of WMNH 95.3 FM in glorious downtown Manchester, New Hampshire. Also on Comcast 97 if you're in Manchester. And hello to all of our online listeners across the nation and around the globe. You can go to my website, mattconnerton.com, for all of your live streaming options, social media links, contact info, show archives, etc., etc. Today is Wednesday, April 19, 2023. So nice to have you all with me. Uh, coming up, coming up in the second hour today, we're going to be joined via Skype by the Court Jesters, and that is who you just heard to open today's show. A track called "Summertown." Uh, that is from their brand new album, "Can't Stop Now," which is about to come out. Uh, I think tomorrow might be the official release date, but we'll get the update from them. But they're going to be Skyping in, uh, John and Tina. Uh, they are from the state of Maine, so they're local-ish. They're just one state over. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Can't Stop Now. It's got uh, it's got 14 tracks, so it's definitely a full album. So I look forward to talking with them. They have a nice sound, and uh, that will be coming up today at 5 p.m., uh, in the meantime, if you would like to join me, 603-250-6007, the studio line is open, 603-250-6007. You can also text me at 617-917-4476. I'm on social media at Matt Connerton. Uh, you can email me at uh, matt at mattconnerton.com. And of course, you can interact and opine in the Facebook live chat. Uh, but the best thing to do so that we can hear and enjoy your dulcet tones is to give us a call at 603 603- Two five zero six zero zero seven, and um, by the way, uh, Joe Friday shared uh, shared something in the Facebook live chat about the event, uh, the big event that uh, Peter White is involved in on Friday. Uh, Joe Friday posted, uh, everyone needs to head to Diz's ca- uh, Cafe. It actually says Diz's Cage, which would be a cool name, but uh, I'm pretty sure that's a typo. <laughs> Diz's Cafe on Friday to indulge in a Bob Friedis Squad Dog special menu. Should be a great time from 5 to 9 p.m. And uh, that is, I do have the information on that also from uh, social media. Let's see here. Um, the celebrity restaurateur is Peter White of The Morning Show with Peter White, which you can hear weekdays from 7 to 9 a.m. with a replay from 2 to 4 p.m. right before this show. Uh, but uh, he, is, he is the celebrity restaurateur, which I, I assume means he uh, has a say in the menu and so forth. Uh, very cool. Uh, yeah, so this goes from 5 to 9 p.m. Uh, at Diz's Cafe, right at, I think the address is 860 Elm Street, so it's right up the street. It's close. Uh, it says here, join Peter White as he raises money for his chosen nonprofit, Hope NH. And uh, Hope is helping our friend, our, I'm sorry, helping our pupils excel. Uh, 10%, uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, 10% off of uh, Peter's uh, special menu of food and drinks. Uh, or 10% of, will be uh, donated to Hope, rather. Uh, Peter is best known for his hyper Manchester radio show, The Morning Show with Peter White, Monday through Friday from 7 to 9 a.m. on WMNH 95.3 FM. So congratulations to Peter on this event, and of course, uh, uh, Hope NH, Matt Cushane does a great job with that. Um, if any of this sounds familiar, Hope NH or Matt Cushane, but you can't quite uh, place where you've heard that before, uh, of course, uh, the Miracle on Elm Street, uh, which is done every year, um, and uh, they do uh, they heavily promote that on the morning show. And of course, Matt Cushane is uh, uh, involved in that. He and Peter work together on that. So, uh, so they're working on this too. So that's going to be Friday from five to nine p.m. at Diz's Cafe, right up the street. So there you go. Um, don't know if I'll. I, you know what? I might. I might actually just take a quick jaunt. Uh, down the street and uh, wave the hand and and uh, say hello to everybody. Uh, Fridays, of course, are my uh, busy day here at WMNH because I'm on the air here until six, and then we have Retrospection Radio with Paul E. C. Uh, from eight to eleven, and you know I I get some of my own uh, work done uh, in between shows. But uh, so I I would not uh, necessarily have time to go there and enjoy a meal, but uh, I might go down and uh, wave the hand, as they say. And uh, congratulate everybody, as I'm sure it will be a, a very successful event. So uh, that is this Friday. Thank you, Joe Friday. Speaking of Friday, thank you, Joe Friday, uh, for mentioning that. Uh, Friday, as I mentioned, is a, a busy day here at WMNH. Of course, uh, I'm going to have a uh, uh, great uh, musical guest here on Friday. Uh, Jenny has booked uh, Andrea Paquin. 
I believe is her name, a uh, uh, very talented singer-songwriter. She's going to be here with us live in studio, and she'll be bringing her guitar, and uh, she'll play some songs for us in the second hour, so we look forward to that. Uh, so that is Friday, and then, of course, uh, we have uh, Granite State of Mind, hosted by the great Rob Azevedo. And now that we're into the warm weather, uh, Rob is uh, back to, uh, and of course, his co-host, Polly Stone, they're back to the barn, uh, or back to the barn, as uh, they say in some parts around here. Uh, Pembroke City Limits uh, recording the shows there, so which is uh, you know it's it's a bummer. I always look forward to seeing uh, in one sense because I always look forward to seeing Rob and uh, Polly on uh, on Fridays, but uh, but when they record the shows at Pembroke City Limits, you know they're able to to have the full band set up, do a live set and uh, and an interview, of course, uh, as usual. Uh, so. Uh, so that's uh, that's Friday. And then, of course, uh, I'm back uh, from 8 to 11 p.m. for Retro Spectrum Radio with Pauly C. So Friday is a very busy day around here. It's my favorite day of the week here at WMNH, and uh, I enjoy it uh, tremendously. Uh, let's see who else is in the uh, Facebook live chat here. Oh, one other thing before we get to that, too, as long as we're doing uh, programming notes. I see Eric Pilcher in the Facebook live chat. Eric, of course, does our classic film reviews every Friday. Our friend from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Uh, so we look forward to that. Escape from New York, I believe, is uh, this Friday's review. And it is uh, Eric Pilcher's birthday. So happy birthday, Eric. So uh, very happy to. I know he's, uh, he's he's in the chat room. I don't know if he can actually hear what I'm saying he, because I, I think he's still at work. But he, he checks in in the chat room anyway. So everybody in the chat room, please wish Eric uh, a happy birthday so we know that he'll, he'll see it. Uh, and we'll say hello to everybody in here quickly. And then we'll get into some stuff. Yep, Eric said in the chat, uh, stopping in while on break to say hello. Oh, so maybe he can hear us. Uh, Joe Friday says, Cedar Rapids or Cedar Waters? Uh, Cedar Rapids, uh, Joe Friday. Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Is there a Cedar wa- wa- Waters? Um, JFed, Jason Federson is in the chat and says, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Texas Mike joins us in the Facebook live chat and says, happy birthday, Eric Pilcher. Uh, Rhonda Favero also joining us says, good afternoon, guys. Good afternoon, Rhonda. Uh, Scott Robinson, uh, says this is regarding our uh, musical guest who's going to be joining us in the second hour. Uh, the court jesters, they're going to be Skyping in, but I did play one of their songs, the, uh, single, uh, Summertown. Uh, Scott says this sounds like a cross between the monkeys and ABBA. And that is not an insult. No, of course not. No, no. Uh, listen, the monkeys, uh, you know, they, they, I mean, I think eventually they got their due, but, uh, uh, you know, there, there was a period where, because the monkeys was not only did they release music, but it was a TV show, a silly TV show. So I think there were a lot of people who never really took them seriously. Uh, and I'm sure that's uh, still the case today, but I think over, over the, over the years, they've kind of gotten their due. Uh, they did some great stuff. Uh, you know, uh, the early, uh, monkeys music that you heard, on the TV series was written by other people, but uh, uh, some uh, some great stuff there. Daydream Believer, I think, is a great song. Is that the one that's written by Neil Diamond? Um, Last Train to Clarksville, great song. Uh, there's a lot of really good stuff there. Um, and ABBA. I, I liked ABBA when I was a kid. I'm not sure I'd listen to them now, but uh, I used to like that song, Take a Chance, Take a Chance, Take a Chance, Take a Chance. Take a chance. I, I can't do it. Why do I try? But... Uh, yeah, no, uh, they have a nice sound out of the court gestures. I'm really looking forward to talking uh, to them. Um, <laughs> Joe Friday says, I want them to make a signature dessert, but I'm not going to read the name of the dessert on the air because that could be taken wrong and I could get in trouble. But that is funny. Uh, very tempted to read that, but I'm, uh, I'm not going to. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, and Eric Street also joins us in the Facebook live chat and says, sing the happy birthday song. Oh, nobody wants uh, to hear me sing. I promise you that. All right. Uh, 603-250-6007 is the studio line. 603-250-6007. Um, you know, I do love on the show to, uh, oh, I don't remember what the other thing was that I wanted to talk about. Uh, if you missed yesterday's show, it was very, very interesting. And I got a lot of positive feedback on it. Um, our guest, uh, during the first hour, into the second hour. He, he was very generous with his time. Uh, my friend Ed Opperman, who we hadn't had on the show in quite some time, uh, but he joined us. Ed is a private investigator 
and uh, knows a lot of people. He's worked on a lot of interesting cases, uh, knows a lot of big players, has interacted with them. Uh, he also hosts his own show, uh, a syndicated program called The Opperman Report, which I recommend. And Opperman, if you're looking for, you know, it's it, it spelled just like it sounds, you know, two P's, O-P-P-E-R-M-A-N, Opperman. Um, uh, but uh, I thought that was a pretty uh, fascinating uh, conversation that we had yesterday. And we talked about, uh, well, actually, we, we touched on quite a few things, but I think the, the biggest uh, uh, portion of our conversation was uh, the inside story on Hunter Biden's laptop. And, you know, it's not something I talk about a lot on the show because it's uh, th- there's not much to say about it, uh, except, uh, uh, you know, I mean, I'm sure... Sean Hannity uh, and Howie Carr, you know, guys like that, they probably find any opportunity they can to uh, bring it up. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I don't care about it until there's uh, something to care about. But uh, it was interesting getting the story from Ed because he knows he knows all the players involved and has interacted with them. And he, uh, for example, the, the detail... And it, you know, it's funny. I googled this, and and you know, it's not like it just came from Ed, so it, it's credible. Uh, a lot of reputable news sources talk about it, but for some reason, it, it totally got past me. I never knew that uh, Hunter Biden uh, went and spent three months living with Dr. Keith Ablo. And if you're not familiar with Dr. Keith Ablo, uh, he used to be a maybe he still is, but probably not. He used to be a Fox News contributor. Um, and, uh, he was on the Howard Stern show at least once too. made an appearance on there. Actually, I think he made a few appearances on there doing a sort of a couples therapy thing. Um, interesting guy, uh, kind of a reactionary, uh, politically, but, um, but that was, uh, a, a, a surprise. I had no idea that part of the story. I had no idea that he had gone and spent three months there and that he left his laptop at Dr. Keith Ablo's residence and uh, that's how this whole thing first started. I didn't know that part. And it was interesting to um, to really get the inside scoop on all of that uh, from someone who uh, wasn't, uh, I certainly didn't feel, uh, you know, wasn't coming to the table or the microphone uh, with any specific political agenda uh, or or goal in mind. He was just he was just here to tell the story because he knows the people. Uh, he uh, he he knows he knows all the players involved and he knows what happened. And uh, you know it was interesting to, uh, to hear him talk about how you know the of course the data on the laptop has been duplicated and so in a sense is multiple laptops. But you know you have the original which the, the evidence of course has been compromised uh, six ways to Sunday because of the chain of custody problems with it and. And uh, uh, just a fascinating conversation. So anyway, if you didn't hear it, uh, I, I please go back and listen to it. I, I it was one of I would probably put it in my top ten of just favorite interviews that I've ever done on this program. I we've got to do that more often with Ed Opperman. Uh, that was a lot of fun, and Ed's a great guy too. I, I really like him and appreciate him uh, uh, very much. Um, Tom Blanchard uh, joins us in the Facebook live chat and says, congratulations, Eric, you're old now. Oh, that's, uh, well, no, I, well, we all get older, Tom. Uh, you cannot, you cannot stop the hands of time. Time is undefeated. No, father time. That's how the expression goes. Uh, I've heard, uh, uh some professional athletes uh, say that father time is undefeated. Uh, Joe Friday says, and I think this is referring to my comment that Ed knows, uh, all the, the major players, uh, uh, Joe says, uh, so did Henry Hill. How did that work out? <laughs> Henry Hill. Um, oh, or, or maybe you're referring to Henry Hill going on the Howard Stern show. That's probably what you meant, Joe. Sorry if I was a little slow on the uptake there. Yeah, I can't listen to those segments. If you don't know what Joe Friday is referring to, Henry Hill uh, used to make regular appearances on the Howard Stern show. This was after, you know, after, after Henry Hill became a household name because of the Goodfellas movie. Uh, of course, in Goodfellas, he's played by the late, great Ray Liotta. And if you've never... Who hasn't seen Goodfellas? But if you've never seen Goodfellas, you have to see it. I, I think that was one of Eric's film reviews, if I remember correctly. But um, Henry Hill used to go on the Howard Stern Show. And uh, occasionally, those segments will come up on... You know, I have Sirius XM satellite radio in the car. And uh, there's... Howard Stern has two channels. He has Howard 100, which is the current show. And then he's got Howard 101 which is uh, all just classic clips. And um, 
uh, sometimes I'll hear, and it's, it's, it just seems to be a randomized rotation on Howard 101, but uh, there's not usually any kind of a theme. It's just, you know, different clips that come up from over the years. And uh, but the Henry Hill clips that come up, I can't listen to them. Uh, he he sounds drunk uh, in, in on the phone. It's it's just him calling into the show. Um, he, he sounds, uh, it's hard to understand what he's saying and it gets very tedious. So I don't know about you, Joe Friday, but I, I can't listen to those clips. I, I've, I don't think Henry Hill is, um, as interesting on the Howard Stern show as he, uh, seems to be, uh, in the, uh, in the Goodfellas movie. (laughs) Let me put it that way. Interesting guy, no doubt, but yeah, I can't listen to him on Howard. Uh, hello to, uh, Crystal, our friend from Illinois. Who joins us in the chat and says, happy birthday, Eric. Uh, Isaac Banks from Greensboro, North Carolina says, happy birthday, hashtag Eric Pilcher, as our friends in Green in, uh, Greensboro will do. Uh, and of course, adds, hashtag Eric Pilcher, here's your birthday present for you, Night Skylard. So, Isaac Banks, I'm confused. Are you giving, are you presenting Night Skylard to Eric Pilcher? Uh, Miriam Banish joins us in the Facebook live chat and says, good afternoon. Hello, Miriam. And also, uh, Jenny, uh, just shared the link in the chat room, uh, for the, uh, the, the petition. Uh, and by the way, we should stress it because, uh, for anyone who misunderstood, it's not a fundraiser. This is a petition, uh, to get Jenny and others, uh, who have the illness, uh, uh that she has the, uh, this, uh, you know, CRPS complex regional pain syndrome and small fiber neuropathy to get these covered uh, by uh, insurance companies who uh, do not pay for treatment and they should, and we must hold them accountable. Joe Friday says birthday present for Eric squad dog at Diz's. Well, I, uh, and uh, that would be wonderful, except I don't think, uh, I don't think Eric is going to come uh, all the way here for, uh, from uh, Cedar Rapids, Iowa for that, but uh, we could mail one to him. Uh, can you take a squad dog and uh, uh, perhaps have it hermetically sealed and then shipped off to Cedar Rapids, Iowa? Is there a way to do that? I think there might be uh, rules and laws about uh, shipping uh, perishables. I'm not sure uh, how all of that works. Okay. Uh, 603-250-6007 is the number. 603-250-6007. Oh, Isaac Banks says, uh, hashtag Matt Connerton. Eric Pilcher's birthday present is to let him go to Night Skylard's Facebook page and like the page. Well, happy birthday to you, Eric. You get to, uh, and the link is right there in the chat room. You can click Night Skylard's uh, Facebook page and uh, happy birthday. Isn't that, uh, isn't, isn't that wonderful? Oh, Joe Friday says, hell yes, they are not perishable. <laughs> hmm. Uh, that, mm, okay. Um, Let's uh, get into this now. Of course, you know I I love uh, all things media and following stories going on in media and uh, news and so forth. Uh, I I almost, you might say, enjoy talking about uh, the media more than I enjoy talking about the actual stories themselves that are covered. But, and no, uh, this is not, this has nothing to do with the Dominion lawsuit against Fox, which was settled. I think it happened uh, just as we were getting off the air yesterday. We may get to that time permitting, but I have something else. And this is a rare story, my friends, that actually unites some Democrats and Republicans who are on the same page on this. Um, and it's something you, unless you're a radio nerd like me, you might not have paid attention to this. You might not have noticed this, but... Uh, to me, this is interesting. Anything uh, directly uh, uh, affecting radio is very interesting to me. And uh, this is not something uh, that uh, affects uh, WMNH because we are an FM radio station. And the story, the big story right now involving radio has to do with AM radio and that AM might finally be on its way out. Now, I say finally... Not because I want to see that happen, not because I want to see AM radio go away, uh, but because uh, I just mean because people have been predicting that AM radio was going to go away since I was a kid for as long as I can remember. Um, And, you know, one of the interesting things I find over the years, you know, going through life and getting older is it's interesting to see what technologies uh, survive and what technologies do not eventually become obsolete. 
And uh, part of what is fascinating about that is to see how some technologies that you think are going to go away end up sticking around. Like uh, uh, vinyl records, for example. Vinyl never really went away. Uh, people thought once the CD uh, came into uh, prominence and everybody started buying CDs in the 80s that that was going to be the end of vinyl. Um, but vinyl never really went away, and it's had such a resurgence, in fact, that I believe now, today, vinyl actually sells more than CDs does. Now, part of that is because a lot of people who buy vinyl never actually end up opening the package and playing the record. Uh, a lot of people who, if they buy a vinyl copy of something, they're buying it because they're such a fan of that particular artist that they, you know, it, it's for collecting purposes. They just want to have the vinyl, uh, but they might buy the CD for actual play or they in probably in most cases don't bother to do that. They'll buy the vinyl, but they'll listen uh, to the MP3 or the WAV file digitally of the music, right? So vinyl not only never went away as people, as everyone kind of assumed it would, but uh, it's, it's had a resurgence. Um, meanwhile, CDs, which I think some people assumed would be here forever, have been gradually going away. It's, it's gradual, but uh, it, it continues to be the trend. Um, you know, I haven't bought a CD in forever, and I don't want to. I, I love having everything digitally. Uh, I don't need the extra clutter. I, I'm fine not having CDs. Um, but, you know, that's me. I, don't get me wrong. I mean, it's nice to be able to look at liner notes and artwork, and I do have an appreciation for all that. But, you know, it's in the year 2023. I'm good without uh, having vinyl. We actually have a uh, CD player here in the studio at WMNH, but, uh, and it, it, it's functioning and everything. You can use it, but I think Rob Azevedo from Granite State of Mind, he'll occasionally bring in a CD, or one of his guests might give him a CD of their music, but I, I believe he's the only one <laughs> to ever use this uh, CD player, so it's kind of funny. Anyway, as we go through life, I just think it's interesting to see what technologies stick around, what technologies do fade away, uh, it, it it doesn't always uh, match our uh, you know our expectations or predictions, and that's part of the fun of it is the surprises. Um, AM radio. Now I remember when I was a kid. I, I remember being very young and hearing adults around me talking about you know having conversations about oh nobody listens to AM anymore. Nobody cares about AM. It sounds terrible. It's got that annoying whistle. You know that that weird. I don't know if it's still a thing, but I remember when I was a kid, if you turn on AM radio, sometimes if the signal wasn't great, it, it was like this weird whistle that you would hear. And uh, I just remember adults talking about, you know, what what do we need AM radio for? FM is so much better. The quality is is great. You don't get that annoying whistle. Uh, it, it's just better. Who needs AM radio? Then something happened. Um, some people... Uh, like to blame and or credit, depending on your point of view, uh, very specifically Rush Limbaugh for saving AM radio. And some people would take a much broader view of it and say conservative talk radio is what saved AM radio. But what happened is um, conservative talk shows uh, found a home on AM radio. Uh, there, you know, there wasn't much political talk at the time on FM. And, of course, uh, you know, the Internet wasn't a thing yet, but because um, now you've got a million options, uh, which is one of the reasons I appreciate all of you uh, spending your time with me, because you've got a million other options, literally, on the Internet. You've got millions of options. Uh, so I, I appreciate you. But um, but AM uh, was was hanging on by a thread, but somehow... And this is why, too, and we talk about this sometimes on the show, when you're talking about media, if you're talking uh, about political talk shows, specifically political talk, it is so heavily dominated by conservatives. Um, there are not many uh, uh, successful liberal talk show hosts, specifically on, on radio and political talk radio, terrestrial radio. Um, you know, you've got a few, Arnie Arneson, who's, you know, you might think of her as being sort of regional uh, to this area, but she's she's carried in, in stations in, in other markets. Stephanie Miller, pretty well known. You know, she was on Air America, so that that uh, helped bolster her uh, profile. 
Uh, who else? Tom Hartman. Tom Hartman might be the biggest one for the the, the liberal uh, talk shows. You know, so you've got a few, but it's very heavily dominated by uh, conservative talk. And there's been books written about it. There's been a lot said about it that, you know, it was kind of the perfect storm. You had you had AM radio, which was desperate for programming other than, you know, just easy listening, easy listening, oldies, whatever. Right. Actual programming that would draw listeners and therefore draw sponsors and advertisers. So it was fertile ground for if, if somebody could just find something to, to fill these airwaves with, right? Also, you had the rollback of the equal time laws and regulations. So we used to have something called, and I'm no expert on this. I, I can look up the details, but we used to have something called the equal time doctrine, which, uh, which ultimately went away. The equal time doctrine was if you gave... If you gave uh, one uh, political party or one ideology time on a particular issue, you had to offer equal time to the opposition. Um, some people, in fact, I remember our friend uh, Fred Bonig, who we haven't heard from in a long time, but Fred from the Daily Ripple. I remember he, him calling in at one point and talking about how, you know, they never should have gotten away with that. And that's why uh, conservative talk radio is so dominant and, and it's, it's the, the only voice on AM radio is conservative um, personally, I think that, uh, I, I would not support bringing back the equal time doctrine and it's never going to happen anyway. Uh, but even if there were a possibility of it, I would not support it. Um, I understand if you're looking at AM radio specifically, you might see an, an, an imbalance, but, uh, you could also look at cable news media and, you know, if it, it may look a little lopsided in the other direction. So you really, I, I just, I also don't see any practical way to administer that in the era of the internet what do you uh, what are you going to do you've got you've got am radio you've got fm radio you've got cable news you've got the internet you've got you know youtube and everything everything online you know you're going to somehow regulate all of that uh with an, some sort of equal time doctrine it would be impossible so uh, i think it's a, it's an absurd idea but the equal time doctrine going away combined with uh, AM radio being such fertile fertile ground and desperate for something to fill the time to bring listeners back, it was kind of a perfect storm. And that's how conservative talk radio got a foothold and, and really saved AM radio. So AM radio, much like vinyl records I was just talking about a moment ago, AM radio uh, found a way to not only survive when it looked like it was on its way out, but actually have a massive resurgence. It, never on the scale of FM radio. I mean, I I never you know, the radio that I have in my car. It's got both AM and FM, and it's got satellite radio. Um, I never listen to AM. I never click that button. To be honest with you, uh, I'm I'm either on FM or I'm on uh, satellite, uh, one or the other. Um, but uh, the reason that this is uh, happening now, part of it is auto manufacturers are deciding, some are deciding, especially in electric vehicles, to no longer put AM radios in the cars, to no longer include AM radio. So you would just have FM and satellite, I guess. Um, and, you know, an easy uh, Bluetooth access to uh, the internet if you want to listen to podcasts and whatnot. But no more AM. And that may be the death knell. Now, I'll give you an example because we were talking earlier about technology that, you know, sometimes you don't know how long it's really going to hang around and sometimes you're wrong. I, I was working at, uh, back in the 90s, I was uh, a manager for a national retail chain that sold CDs and DVDs and we still had cassette tapes. Um, I mean, they were cassette tapes were just barely hanging on when I was there, but we still had them. And I always thought cassettes would have gone away a lot quicker than they did. But I was convinced then, and I'm convinced now, because it wasn't until probably the early 2000s that cassettes actually, truly started to die, right? Um, I mean, you can still buy blank cassettes for, you know, home recording and whatnot. But, but I remember having a car that didn't have a cassette player, but I still had a lot of cassettes, and I had the, the, the old car kit. You would uh, plug it in. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But... Um, 
I am convinced that the only reason cassettes even hung on, I think cassettes would have gone away five to 10 years earlier than they did, if not for one thing, the auto industry. As long as the auto industry continued to make new cars that still had cassette decks in them, cassettes would be around. And once the auto industry finally said, okay, that no more, we'll, we'll put CD players in cars. We're not going to put cassette players in cars anymore. That's it. That was the end of cassettes. So this might actually be the end of AM radio if, if this happens, where no more AM radio in cars. Now, the reason I said that this is an issue, a, uh, a unique issue that uh, seems to bring uh, together liberals and conservatives is... Um, you've got, for example, and we'll look at it, apparently, uh, Mark Levin and Sean Hannity, you know, a couple of, uh, big, uh, conservatives in media, of course, uh, have been complaining that this is a way to silence conservatives, you know, and of course they kind of go to that, uh, conspiracy, they're going to go to that conspiracy route <laughs> as one would expect, I suppose. So they're upset. But then on the left, you've also got people like Senator uh, Ed Markey of Massachusetts who's upset because he's saying, wait a minute, AM radio is still how the government communicates emergency instructions to listeners. You need AM radio. AM radio is uh, vital for the uh, security and safety of the country because it's how the government communicates <clears throat> in an emergency. So uh, so this issue is unique in that sense. Um, let's look at this. Now, this is from uh, MorningBrew.com. Oh, Jenny said, that's what I said. Yeah, exactly. This is from MorningBrew.com. AM radio era might be ending with a crackle. Car manufacturers are increasingly making EVs without AM radio. And by the way, EV, of course, is electric vehicle. So Hannity and Mark Levin and other conservatives who are complaining, they're coming at it from the uh, standpoint of, uh, hey, uh, <laughs> electric vehicles. Well, who buys electric vehicles? Oh, liberals. See, this is part of a conspiracy to uh, to kill off uh, conservative talk radio. Um which I don't, I, I seriously doubt there's any conspiracy here, but uh, I don't know. Uh, Joe Friday in the chat room says, hello, Tom Sapienza. Oh, hello, Tom. Um, but it says here, apparently electric cars and AM radio don't mix well. The New York Times reports that many EV manufacturers are booting AM radio from their vehicles, citing electromagnetic interference that causes pesky noise and static. Well, pesky noise and static, so wouldn't then AM just sound like it's always sounded? <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. No, that that annoying whistle that used to come through, I think that was, uh, I think they they uh, fixed uh, that eventually. But I remember hearing that when I was a kid. You turn on the AM radio, you're, you're this, this high-pitched wheezing. It's like, how does anyone listen to this? Uh, it says here, Tesla, Volvo, Porsche, Audi, and some Volkswagen EVs already come without AM radio. Drivers of Ford's 2023 F-150 Lightning electric pickup will also have to make do without ideologically charged hot takes from their favorite talk show host on their morning commute. Technological solutions to make EVs and AM radio compatible do exist, but car manufacturers might not bother to accommodate a minority of radio listeners. Just 20% of U.S. radio audiences listen to AM radio, and they tend to be older. If the trend continues, growing EV adoption might spell the end of AM radio. Many AM stations are reliant on rush hour listeners, and while FM waves are more resistant to electromagnetic interference, switching could be too costly for many radio stations, especially those that serve a niche audience. There's hope for AM aficionados. Senator Ed Markey, Democrat of Massachusetts, recently requested that automakers avoid depriving drivers of AM radio. And it's not nostalgia for crackle-filled ball game broadcasts that, that's influencing the 76-year-old politician's stance. Markey claims that AM waves help government officials communicate with the public, particularly during emergencies. So that is from MorningBrew.com. And uh, this is from Boston.com. The end of AM radio in your car, not if Ed Markey has anything to say about it. Um, Senator, uh, 
<laughs> Eric Pilcher in the chat room says, sounds like you need a real New Yorker to speak on this. <laughs> yes. That was a little inside, but if you know, you know. Uh, it says here, uh, Senator Ed Markey sent off letters to 20 different car manufacturers asking to keep AM radio around in future models. Uh, it says here, AM radio and cars isn't going anywhere while Massachusetts Senator Ed Markey is around. In a letter he sent to more than 20 car manufacturers, Markey outlined why he thinks AM radio is important and asked that they continue to have AM radios in future models, including EVs. Uh, he wrote in the letter, quote, Broadcast AM radio remains a crucial, cost-free source of news, sports, and weather, and more importantly, is an essential medium for public safety officials, including the president, to communicate with the public during emergencies, unquote. Uh, Markey cited statistics from the Pew Research Center news platform fact sheet, from September 2022, which said 47% of Americans received their news from the radio. Well, yeah, but apparently only 20% from AM. Uh, some EV manufacturers have raised concerns, even as far back as 2016, about how the battery power of an EV can interfere with the AM radio signals. However, Markey addressed those concerns, saying, quote, car manufacturers appear to have developed innovative solutions to this problem, unquote. Um, let's look at quickly too. Now this is from Mediaite. Uh, this, uh, discusses the, uh, the conservative take, uh, coming from Hannity and, uh, Mark Levin, uh, says here, Hannity joins Mark Levin protesting removal of AM, uh, in electric vehicles as a direct hit to conservatives. Uh, it says here, Fox News' Sean Hannity is the latest conservative media powerhouse to allege car manufacturers may be deliberately making electric cars without AM radio accessibility as a hit to the right, which is long used talk radio as one of its key platforms. By the way, before we go any further with this, let me just point out, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, there are uh, many, many FM radio stations that also carry these same shows. So it's not as though if AM radio does uh, fade fade away uh that you know you're never going to hear another conservative uh, political talk show on the radio again there's plenty of fm stations that also carry these shows um i'm not saying that it wouldn't be and, and actually well and let's say okay so according to that other article only 20 percent of americans one-fifth of americans actually when they listen to the radio listen to am versus fm so if uh, so let's say yeah this the math probably doesn't work i'm not good at math anyway i was going to say so let's just say hypothetically that that means one fifth of the audience share of these shows goes away but aren't those aren't those audience members going to find other ways to get their favorite uh programming everybody streams online now what is it that you can get on am radio that you can't just get online or is the problem that older listeners, they tend to be older listeners listening to AM, they don't want to go online or they don't want to have to try to figure it out. I don't know. I don't believe, I say all that to say though, I don't believe there's any conspiracy here, but, but that's, you know, predictably that's the, uh, the tack that they're taking. Uh, it says here, Fox News host Mark Levin, who like Hannity has a massive audience on radio, made the same warning, calling the move an attack. Like, by the way, you ever listen to Mark Levin? I went through, so I don't listen to him. I think he is on a station in this market here locally. I used to uh, stumble upon his show uh, occasionally. I did go through a phase where I enjoyed him, not uh, not because I uh, agreed with him uh, ideologically, certainly. He's very conservative, uh, and I am not. But uh, he, he does do this thing where he kind of loses his temper and starts yelling into the microphone, and it's kind of entertaining uh, part of what's interesting about it and those moments is trying to figure out, uh, is he really upset or is this part of his part of his act? And I think it's part of his act because sometimes he'll freak out over something and start yelling. And it's like uh, it, it just it, it's, seems like it's an affect and it's um, but it is kind of entertaining and in very limited doses. I can stomach him. Uh, but only if he's losing his temper about something. That's kind of fun. Our friend Shannon is on the line. Hi, Shannon. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? Okay. I, 
you, you're talking about the, um, I haven't heard what you've said for the last two minutes because I've been fiddling around with the radio. Uh-huh. There's an AM button uh, on it because there's two dials, on and volume, and the stations. And there's an FM, AM, and I don't know the other little um, thing. But on, <clears throat> so on my, my one radio doesn't, nothing, there's nothing there. On AM. Yeah. However, on my Bose, this... Hold on a second. Listen. What is that? What am I hearing? That's AM. Oh, it sounds great. I, I mean, that, <laughs> there's two channels that sound kind of uh, more scottish. Uh-huh. But, yeah. I think that, that you know... Let you hear it. Um, I, I I should I should put that on for my background music. Sam calling from outer space. There you go. How about that? That is uh, kind of what it sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's it. All right, Shannon. Thanks for the call. You're welcome, and you have a good night. All right, you too. Bye bye. All right, that was our friend Shannon. If you'd like to call in, 603-250-6007, 603-250-6007. It says here, again, this is from Mediaite, electric cars and even some hybrid models are being manufactured without AM due to electrical interference. According to Axios, this interference could create, quote, annoying buzzing noises and faded singles, uh, uh, sorry, signals, unquote. Uh, Levin said on his radio broadcast last Friday, now I don't do a Mark Levin impression, but if I suddenly start yelling uncontrollably uh, as I'm reading this quote to you, it's because I've spontaneously decided to attempt a Mark Levin uh, impression. Um, But uh, I'm not going to do it. I'll just read what he said. (laughs) Uh, Quote, Let's talk about radios for a minute. Ford is the latest manufacturer that says the future production of cars will not include the AM platform. BMW has said it. Others have said it because it interferes with something or other. They finally figured out how to attack conservative talk radio, unquote. That's absurd. Is he serious? Maybe, I don't know if he's serious. He might not even be serious. Regardless of whether he's serious, I mean, I'm sure, let me put it this way. I'm sure he doesn't actually believe what he's saying. Whether he actually expects you to believe it or he's being tongue-in-cheek, I don't know. He was probably yelling it when he said it. Because like I said, he'll burst out into fits of rage. It's it, That's kind of fun. Uh, Hannity recently spoke with Fox News Digital about the phasing out of the AM radio brand. Quote, it's incomprehensible to me, unquote, Hannity said, noting how customers are looking for more options when it comes to vehicles, not less. Quote, it's not complicated to put in a radio system that allows you to have AM, FM, Sirius XM, or the ability to plug in your own music from your own phone, unquote. Oh, I'm sorry. There's more. Quote, this would be a direct hit politically on conservative talk radio in particular, which is what most people go to AM radio to listen to. So there is a political... So is there a political component to it? Certainly feels like it, unquote. Uh, Hannity told Fox News Digital that since radio licenses are issued federally, it was the responsibility of Congress to, quote, protect that which they oversee, and they shouldn't have a political agenda associated with it or behind it, unquote. Aha! But let me ask you this. Mr. Hannity, why should, I mean, listen, if you're a a conservative like Sean Hannity, you probably don't like the government telling auto manufacturers to have certain standards for emissions and so forth. Why would you want the government to uh, force auto manufacturers to put AM radio in their cars if they don't want to? Are you not a free market conservative, uh, Sean Hannity? I mean, I understand that's all only when it's convenient, right? I mean, hell, in Florida, you have a an allegedly conservative uh, governor uh, beating the hell out of Disney at every opportunity, or at least attempting to, being outmaneuvered in uh, most instances from what I've seen. But it doesn't seem very pro-business, does it? <laughs> you're the largest employer in your state, and you're just trying to make things as hard as you can for them. Uh, I, I don't know. Why would the government, why should the government be involved in regulating uh, what these auto manufacturers, what... 
Uh, meet, I mean, uh, does Hannity believe they should also uh, go back to uh, putting tape decks in cars? Now, to be fair, I'm I'm being a little bit, I'm being a little bit funny because I I do th- there to be fair to him, there is an argument to be made that the federal government they do regulate radio, they regulate terrestrial radio. And they are responsible for issuing licenses. So, for example, you know, here at WMNH, we're a federally licensed FM radio station. Uh, we cannot uh, operate this station without that licensing. That is a fact. That's how it works. So, um, so he's not he's not wrong necessarily. I mean, I again, I don't believe the part about well, it's that there's any sort of conspiracy here against conservative talk radio. That part I don't believe. But, you know, the the thing about him pointing out, well, it, you know, it is the federal government that issues these licenses. So, you know, he's got a point. He does. He does have a point. Now, uh, Crystal, our friend from Illinois, says uh, here in Tornado Alley, that's also what my mom always called it, you know, because she grew up in Illinois. Uh, here, here in Tornado Alley, they have a channel on AM dedicated for weather emergencies. It literally sits there 24-7 waiting for an emergency to happen. Yeah, because they have a lot of tornadoes in that part of the country. Yeah, that makes sense, Crystal. Uh, she also said, granted, the weather radio in Champaign uh, County is down more than it's up, but that's another story. They usually blame the phone company, but this time heavy winds took out the tower it broadcasts from. Well, there's a cruel irony to that. Heavy winds, heavy, bad weather, heavy winds taking down the very tower that the weather radio uh, in that county broadcasts from. It's, uh, it's almost like Mother Nature saying, I don't want you telling the people uh, what I'm planning to do. <laughs> uh, Mother Nature, a cruel mistress, at least in Champaign County, Illinois. So... We'll keep an eye on this. I mean, that that's that's pretty much uh, the scoop there with uh, with the AM radio. Uh, there's also a song uh, by Everclear, uh, the band Everclear, called AM Radio. Uh, I would play that today, but today we're featuring the music of the court jesters uh, uh, who are going to be uh, Skyping in in the second hour, and we're going to talk to them for a bit. Maybe I'll play uh, AM Radio by Everclear at the end of the show today. It would make sense. Uh, to do that, uh, given the subject I was just discussing. But the Court Jesters will be Skyping in. They've got a new album, Can't Stop Now. I think it's coming out tomorrow, officially. I believe it's coming out the 20th, or maybe Friday. And then uh, after that, I do want to talk about uh, the Dominion uh, Dominion settling with Fox News and that lawsuit. Uh, another uh, thing that, you know, it's got some pretty heavy media implications um, and, uh, we'll see what other, uh, kind of trouble we can get into with that. Um, let's see, uh, Isaac Banks in the, uh, Facebook live chat, uh, says, uh, hashtag Jenny coffee. Mom is going to the funeral tomorrow. Also my oldest brother, Mike Banks, uh, have they both died? Isaac Banks. I'm very sorry to hear that. Uh, I don't understand. They're. Uh, going to the, uh, they're going to a funeral. Uh, we do have a call. We'll grab this. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? This is Tina Charest. I'm one of the court jesters. Oh, hello. You're early. Yes, I, I just wanted to make sure. I know we're supposed to call in at five, but I wanted to make <laughs> sure that we were doing this properly. We were supposed to use Skype. Yes. Is is Sky, Skype? Oh my gosh, am I live on your television program? Uh, well, you're live on the radio show. Yes. Oh my goodness. I am so sorry, Matt. Uh, I did not mean to interrupt your show. That's okay. Oh, my goodness gracious. Sorry. Uh, we're kind of hanging out here. Uh, I did not interrupt your show. Ah. That's okay. 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 Uh, are you still there? Uh, sorry. That, that's, that's all right. <laughs> I'm still here. I'm just embarrassed. So, uh, yeah, we'll, um, we'll, we'll call in a few minutes. We just... Uh, we're supposed to be using Skype, and it doesn't seem to be working. That was the reason I was calling. So oh, I'll okay. give you a few minutes. Yeah, that's fine. And I'll call back. That's fine. Uh, I'm going to, uh, in, a, in a couple minutes, I'm going to go to break. I'm going to uh, hit the commercial spots, and I'm going to play one of your songs. Uh, what? But since you're on the line with us, uh, what should I play? I'm going to play something to open the segment. Uh, introduce you, and then uh, at the end of the segment, I'll, I'll close with another one of your songs, too. But do you have a song you'd like me to feature? I already played what I assume is the single. I played uh, at the top of the show, uh, Summertown. Uh, but since you're on the line okay. with us now, what would you like me to play at the break? 
He said he's already played Summertown. Summertown was going to be, because it's the first track. How about Thank God for Others? Thank God for Others? Okay, I'll play that one. Very good. All right. All right, Tina. Okay, well, well I'm so sorry, Matt. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, how embarrassing. No, no, it's okay. It's kind of, That's kind of funny. Uh, all right. Uh, all yeah, right. Yeah, just uh, yeah, call us back, and uh, we'll talk to you shortly. Okay, thanks. Okay, you got it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right, so that was uh, that is Tina from uh, the Court Gestures. Uh, Tina and John, they're going to be joining us uh, coming up in the uh, second hour. <laughs> oh, that was funny. That's uh, that has never happened before. That's a first uh, on the show, but uh, that's all right. <laughs> that is all right. Oh, Isaac Banks, uh, clarifying in the chat room. Hashtag Matt. My mom and Mike, my oldest brother, are going to the funeral. Oh, the funeral for who? Who died? Uh, uh, tomorrow, uh, hashtag Matt Connerton, he says. Well, I'm sorry to hear about this. Uh, I noticed uh, yesterday in the chat room you were talking about your uh, your grandmother wanting to know why somebody put something under the television. Uh, is it your grandmother who died uh, because she was so upset uh, about uh, uh, whatever was going on there? Uh, Isaac Banks also said in the chat room, Hi, Sue Rowe. Good afternoon. How are you doing? I was wondering if you could take me to practice tomorrow is in a rhythm choir at 7 to 8 p.m. at Lindley Park Baptist Church. Oh my goodness, I hope it's not Sue Rowe who died cuz she's not going to be able she's not going to be able to bring you to practice. That's uh oh, what a well, I'll tell you what. The things that go on in Greensboro, North Carolina, they need their own reality show there. It's it's, it's uh, quite calamitous at times. Uh, Isaac Banks said, "It is my aunt Sandra Banks Thompson." Well, I now I I would like to say then in that case uh, rest in peace, uh, Isaac Banks' aunt, Sandra Banks Thompson. Uh, we're all, I, I, I would just like to say, on behalf of all of us here at Matt Connerton Unleashed and at WMNH 95.3 FM, and uh, we, are, uh, we are very sorry to hear of your loss of uh, Sandra Banks Thompson. Uh, we're commemorating multiple things here today. Uh, we commemorate the uh, impending release of uh, Can't Stop Now, the new album from the Court Jesters. Uh, we've, uh, we've commemorated the birthday of our classic film reviewer, Eric Pilcher. And, of course, we uh, commemorate uh, uh, the death of uh, Sandra Banks Thompson. She was, uh, I have no doubt she was a great woman. And uh, Isaac Banks also clarifies, my friend Sue Rowe, she is alive. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Uh, I don't know who would have uh, taken you to practice tomorrow if, if uh, something had happened to Sue Rowe. And I would also just like to say not only condolences regarding the, the, the passing of uh, Sandra Banks Thompson, who, uh, from what I understand, a wonderful uh, woman, but uh, I would also just like to say... And uh, uh, you, however you want to do it, uh, you know, whatever your belief system is, I would like to pray for or ask the universe for or cast a spell for or whatever it may be. The protection of Sue Rowe, because you are depending on Sue Rowe to bring you to band practice tomorrow. And I would hate for Sue Rowe to meet the same untimely fate as your aunt, uh, Sandra Banks Thompson. By the way, how do they pronounce that in, in uh, Greensboro, North Carolina? Do they pronounce it aunt or aunt? That's one of those words. I, I feel like it's a no-win situation with that word. If you say aunt, it sounds like you're talking about an insect. If you say aunt, it sounds like, oh, listen to you, all fancy. You pronounce it aunt. Uh, someone made fun of me about that once when I was a kid, so that's why I'm bitter. Uh, Isaac Banks says, hashtag Suzanne Rover is that name is Sue Rowe. Oh, okay. That's her full name, Suzanne Rover. So uh, we ask for the protection of uh, Suzanne Rover. Uh, we want nothing to happen to Suzanne Rover. In fact, I would like to put her in some sort of a protective bubble uh, so that Isaac Banks can get to his uh, practice tomorrow with the uh, Inner Rhythm Choir, whatever it's called. Uh, because we don't want anything to happen uh, to her. Uh, and uh, plus, uh, I assume she's going to be uh, looking to attend the funeral of Sandra Banks Thompson. All right. Well, listen, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a break. We're going to show some love to our amazing sponsors. And, uh, and then we're going to play uh, a track from The Court Gestures. Uh, we're going to play uh, Thank God for Others. Wonderful song. And, uh, and by that time, uh, uh, Tina and John will be on the line with us and uh, looking forward to talking with them. So very talented. I love their harmonies. Really, really good. So uh, we've got plenty coming up. Don't go away. And uh, 
Sorry, I'm 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 uh, I, I got a little thrown off there. I'm I'm grieving the uh, uh, passing of uh, what's her name, uh, Sandra uh, Sandra Banks Thompson. Then I am uh, having trouble finding <laughs> finding the Hopknot commercial. There it is. All right, we'll be back. We're coming up. Don't go away. Come on down to the Hopknot at 1000 Elm Street, Manchester's premier craft beer and gourmet pretzel bar. Tell us more, Trudy. We make our dough fresh every day. We make a variety of styles of pretzels and serve craft beer, cocktails, and a few bottles of wine. We do the traditional pretzel, and we have multiple flavors for that. We also do stuffed pretzels, pretzel sandwiches, free dessert pretzels, and pretzel knots. The Hop Knot in the Brady Sullivan Plaza at 1000 Elm Street. Bring your kitchen to life with Queen City Cabinetry. Located at 87 Elm Street in the historic Sunbeam Mall in Manchester. Open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. They can be reached at 603-222-2007 or on the web at queencitycabinetrynh.com. Come see the possibilities. Queen City Cabinetry, another proud sponsor of WMNH. Come on down to the Hop Knot at 1000 Elm Street, Manchester's premier craft beer and gourmet pretzel bar. Tell us more, Trudy. We make our dough fresh every day. We make a variety of styles of pretzels and serve craft beer, cocktails, and a few bottles of wine. We do the traditional pretzel, and we have multiple flavors for that. We also do stuffed pretzels, pretzel sandwiches, free dessert pretzels, and pretzel knots. The Hop Knot in the Brady Sullivan Plaza at 1000 Elm Street. WMNH, rip the knob off. Chance. 
That is thank God for uh, thank God for others. That is the court jesters, and I think we have them with us. Oh, we did have them. <laughs> Try this again. Oh, there we go. Oh, Hello I, there. I can hear you. How are you? Welcome to the show. Thank oh. you very much. Thank you for having us. Abs thank you. Absolutely. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Jen, Jen had sent a. Um, uh, an email saying, if you run into any trouble, just call this number. <laughs> yeah. I called. Oh, I, oh, forgive me. I interrupt your program. I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. No, it, it was funny. It's, it's all good. <laughs> Not a problem at all. Not a problem. Hey, at John all. laughed next to me. Well, there you, go. <laughs> you, said to me, you said to me, what's this? What should I do next? <laughs> no. Well, so Matt, Hey, thank you. Yes. Yes. So we have, uh, we have John and Tina here from the court jesters and, uh, where are you located? You're, I know you're in Maine. Whereabouts in Maine? A, a town called Manchester. I don't know if you ever heard of it. I have. Yeah, there are many. I think, um, you know, I've never looked it up, but I I strongly suspect that uh, Manchester is, is probably in the top 10 as far as names of cities that are most common in the United States, because I know there's quite a few Manchesters uh, across the country and uh, it, 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 elsewhere, <laughs> of course, outside of the United States, too. But, yeah, it's got to be one of the most it's common. Yeah, there's a little one in England. Yeah, yeah, I've I've heard of that one. I think that might be where we uh, where we got the name. I'm not sure, but uh, I'm sure. yeah, welcome to the show. And and when does the album come out? Can't stop now. Is this uh, coming out tomorrow? The album yep. is actually being released tomorrow, so it's on Bandcamp now. Uh, people can purchase the album now, but they only get the one song, the first track, now, and then after the twentieth, they'll get the rest of the album. So okay. that's if they want to down if they want to download it. Uh, other than that, we have uh, CDs and uh, USBs that we can get to people. Very good, very good. Um, and I noticed this fourteen songs on this, which uh, I commend you for because you know most uh, most musical guests that I interview on the show, you know, they either do an EP uh, or if they do a full album, it's usually you know maybe ten songs, ten or eleven songs. Uh, what what went into the decision to go for a full? Uh, 14 because that that is impressive well it was one of these things where we had we had the songs and uh we were trying to decide which 10 to put on the album and john finally said on oh, hell with it why don't why don't we just we just put them all in there so yeah that was it really it's let's give people a more bang for their buck type of thing yeah no that's cool um now, are these all, is everything on the album, are these all originals? Because I know that you do some cover songs as well, but it looks like these are all originals, I assume, correct? Yep. All of these are homegrown, so to speak, you know? So, yeah, all original. Outstanding. And we do a lot of covers. When we play, we do a lot of, we do every gig, you know? We played everywhere from a, a street corner to, to stadiums. Yeah. Smaller ones, <laughs> very small. <laughs> but, you know, and we do a lot of cover tunes in the in in our repertoire. So you kind of tailor tailor your song choices to where you're playing. Right, right. right. You, mo covers and any musician will tell you covers are to please the crowd. Right, yeah. covers are to please the crowd. And then and then when you start writing your own stuff, you start to develop your own style, and you have your you have your musicians out there that kind of shape you and form you, and that you use as influences. Uh, but, but she means she stole all her songs from these people. Uh, no, no, that's not right. We cut it out. The, the, <laughs> such a goober. So, so yeah, the um, the the covers, the covers that are please people, and we certainly make them our own because we're an acoustic duo. Not every we we've done we've done um, Guns and Roses songs. Um, uh, you know the Eagles. Do you and, dance? And do you swing? I'm not going to do my Axl Rose dance. So <laughs> it, it's not a video, John. It's an audio. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> so yeah. anyway, uh, uh, but the originals themselves, uh, I I really 
like um, Anne Murray and Linda Ronstadt and and Karen Carpenter is probably one of my favorites. And um, John John has his own influences from across the pond. I like Elvis, both of them. There you go, Stella Lynn Presley. Yes, yes, I knew who you were talking about. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Not a not not so, the most uh, common name around here. <laughs> no, 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 no. Pretty easy to no, narrow no, it no. down, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, between between John being from England and me being from uh, Maine, we we've blended our our influences in our sound. But the one thing that we we have in common, and we we picked up on immediately when we started, we met at open mics actually, and oh. it was it was our, our love for harmonies. Yeah, and uh, the the chemistry was was just very very evident, and uh, the the we were gigging in very short order after that. Excellent. Yeah, I've I've uh, over the years I've talked to a lot of musicians who you know whether it be duos or bands or you know people who that's that's where they've met is open mics, and um, that's a great environment for that uh, type yeah. of thing to spontaneously happen. And um, who who writes? Do you write all the songs together, or do you write individually at all? Or uh, tell me about the we songwriting. Have, yeah, we we have written zero songs together. Oh, all all of these all of these songs were written at our on our own time in our own space, and then we brought them to each other. Okay. So uh, so yeah, then from there we 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 put our touch to it. So if I write a song and I bring it to John and. He he puts his touch to it and vice versa, and then we add whatever harmonies sound good, and then that's it. Okay, I think it's fair to say that Tina's favorite song on the album is "Pretty Sure I Lost My Dog." Actually, that that's not, <laughs> <laughs> but but it's a huh. it, oh, okay. Sorry, Matt, we're all over the place. The the it's okay. The Pretty sure I lost my dog. Country music wasn't a big thing over in England. I'm well, told. we had the Beatles. But, you know. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, he he just hmm. hides behind. He went to school with the Beatles. Yeah. Anyhow, <laughs> the, oh, my. The, oh my! The um, um, so pretty sure I lost my dog was John's play on what country music really is, and, ah. and, and I don't know. You tell him what, where well, you. Well, you've got the dog, you've got the pickup truck. There's beer, there's jail, <laughs> and you know, play the back, record backwards, you get it all back again. So it's it's a good song. Yeah, yeah. So that's John's idea, yeah. and even. As he's singing it, he, he thinks all Americans have a Southern accent or a cowboyish accent. So it's uh, it's he's he's a weird dude, but but, you, but he grows on you. Well, I look, I do look forward to hearing that one when the album comes out. Um, Gosh, what? Uh, <laughs> so now, as far as the harmonies go, uh, is that do you, is that a priority in every song? Is or are are there any where you're not necessarily? harmonizing because that, from what I've heard from the songs that you send me, it sounds like that's, that's uh that's an important priority as far as uh, how these songs are produced. It certainly is. It's one of the things, especially when you're playing live, uh, you know, musicians are a dime a dozen, right? They're, they're everywhere and, and everyone has their own niche and their own sound. Uh, this is definitely, if John and I had to play with no instruments at all, the harmonies would never go away. So, so yes, the, the harmony is a, is a priority. It's a love for both of us. We both enjoy singing harmonies probably more than we like singing lead. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, every, every song, um, it's very uh, natural as well. Isn't it? Yes. Yes. It just kind of, kind of, yeah, there's really, we never, we don't even rehearse. We just kind of show up at a gig. <laughs> we, we rehearse nonstop. Oh, we, no, no, he's lying. Practicing. He's lying. He, all, and those people from England, I'm telling you, lies, lies, lies. So, so. <laughs> well, that's, uh, but, well, Tina, that's why we fought the Revolutionary War. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. What's that between yourselves, sir? <laughs> oh, sorry. no, that was a oh, civil that was, war. That, that was, was the other war. one. Okay. You, sorry. Okay. Sorry. sorry. Oh, I've enjoyed so, this so much. Sorry, John. Don't, don't mind us. Other. <laughs> I keep. I, I do a lot of gigs, and I, every now and again, someone asks for the uh, the Battle of New Orleans. You know. Oh really? One. Yeah. Fire yeah. Our guns and the British guns. <laughs> well, no, is know. that is that your American accent? You is like that? that? <laughs> that's that's pretty good. Good day, y'all. Oh my poor you, Matt. I feel sorry for you. That's that's quite all right. No, I I love uh, I love I love talking to musicians. That's a, a big reason why uh, why I do this, and it's um it's it's good for me. I like I like learning about the creative process. Do you do you think that you'll write songs together in the future, or is this approach uh, just working so well? You'll just keep writing separately and then uh, br uh, bring bring the songs to each other. 
Well, probably happened this way because we've had these songs that that we had been writing um, over the years, and this is our first album, so we we pulled together what we had written. I think for the next project, we'll probably, most likely, um, yeah. we'll be working together, um, at least on the majority of the songs. Okay, but cool. for the first album, we already had songs kind of written, and gee, you know, let let's do this and that with them, and then we added the harmony touch to it. Yeah, I yeah. Think it, I think as well, I, I'm definitely. When I'm writing a song now, I, I bear in mind, you know, if Tina's going to sing it, how it's going to be from her perspective. Mm -hmm. I definitely think I definitely have one eye on the uh, her singing it and the way the harmonies are going to pan out. And she does some fancy. You should you should hear the uh, the raw recordings of the of the, this album with just the harm. We could do an album just the harmonies. Yeah, and Tina does uh, probably layers six or seven in there. Just incredible. Oh wow. Okay. Well, and and John, I'll, I'll look at him and go, "Are you are you even going to sing on this track?" <laughs> he says, "I'll add something later. I'll add something later." So yeah, but but to um to that uh, to that point that John just said that there's a song on this album called Class Reunion that he specifically wrote uh, about two two boys that grew up together from each on a, on the other side of the tracks right from each other and and uh and how they how society kind of forces them apart and uh he just changed some of the words around so that i could sing it because that's what he wanted and john always gets his way and, and I, I didn't want to sound as bitter as tina now yeah, 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 it's a bitter <laughs> song. but it's a really it's a really nice little little um reminiscent song about about uh, now it's about a, bo a boy and a girl who grew up together and then they drifted apart because one was um, one came from uh, a more affluent family and the other did not. No and, how, and how and how society stop it <laughs> and how society kind of put you know forces people down a road or, or doors open in different areas for different people because of that. So that's what that song's all about. And John had to change a couple of words to make it more fitting for a female to sing. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, Miriam Bannis was asking in the chat room, uh, where in England uh, are you from, John? Uh, a little place called Yeovil, the People's Republic of Yeovil, Somerset, England. Okay. We have the best football team in the whole country. Oh, all right. You know, the round football. <laughs> not yes. the oval one. That, not the one you throw. Right, right. <laughs> the one you kick. Yes, yeah. you go. <laughs> the Under one you kick with your foot. Understood. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, uh, how long have you been here, John? Uh, Thirteen years. Oh, okay. Nearly Fourteen years. Okay. I, um, I met my wife playing poker on Facebook. Actually, I won her in a card game, but don't tell her I said that. Right. But, right. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, I came over and visited her. In fact, it was fourteen years ago this week I first came here. Oh wow. He's he's using visited very modestly. He literally quit his job, left his friends and family, never said a word, jumped on a plane to come back and marry his wife. So it's well, quite a romantic story, actually. When it's well, when know, it's I love, it's I love. I can be a talentless bum in any country. <laughs> Doesn't have to be England to be talentless here. <laughs> <laughs> well we're glad we're glad you're here and uh now were, were you uh back home uh were you involved in the music scene uh, where you were living at that time back there yeah yeah i was yeah i had a I was playing in a duo though with a fellow who's uh still over there playing he's probably still wondering where i am <laughs> right right <laughs> <laughs> tell him he was leaving yeah. See, just, just and uh yeah, yeah. I, I kind of played for years you know and one one of these days, I'll finally get it right. One of these days, <laughs> what, what music? Yeah, you oh, know, I'll goodness. be able to play guitar properly one day and be able to John, sing. Properly. John does a fabulous job. Very strong guitar. Yeah, no, I I, I can tell from listening. And uh, now, what about you, Tina? What what were you doing musically before uh, before John? Were you just doing open mics, or did you have a band going, nope. or were you uh, out there doing well? Yeah, that no, that's actually a good question. I I started singing at church when I was nine. And, uh, then, uh, I eventually, when I was 19, I started singing funerals, weddings, you know, that kind of thing, all, always in the church scene. Cause my, my family grew up in the church. And then, and then I started doing open, I joined a band when I was 18 and did that for about five years. And then, you know, got married, had a child, that, that kind of thing. And then it wasn't until after I got divorced that I decided to get back into, and I started going to open mics and mm. that's where I met John. So, um, and met, and met many, many 
many good musicians, um, great musicians. And, and John and I just, um, we hit it off and, and gee, let's do a gig. And that was it. So yeah, I've been, I've been singing my whole life, just not yeah. always in this scene. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. And what about, uh, recording? Because, and I, this is one of my favorite things to ask musicians about because, you know, we live in, in such an interesting time when there's so many different options in terms of how you record and, you know, uh, the days of having to go to a million dollar studio, uh, are gone. You can still do that, but you can also, you can record at home. You can do all kinds of stuff. So, uh, can you tell me about, uh, you know, because the tracks uh, sound great, uh, what's the process of recording these? Do you do you go somewhere? Do you work with a producer? Is it all DIY? How are these songs recorded? Uh, DIY. It the John has a closet in his house that has some eggshell stuff on the oh, walls. That and, is the house. Oh, that is the, <laughs> that's the whole house. <laughs> it's like a it's like a three or four foot square room that uh, that we did all the recording in, and John John did all of the arrangements and. Um, and recorded it, and then we brought it to to a a, a, a local um, a guy here in town that we know well, and we love him, and he loves us, and he did the mastering for us. So yeah, it was all all um, John put many many many, many hours. Thing. Yeah, show up after I'd show up after work, mm. pop in, sing for about an hour, and then I'd leave, and John would do arrangements, and yeah. Oh wow! So that's it. And I've got I've got friends playing on the album as well from from England. You know, they recorded their bits over there so it's been very much a friends and family uh kind of um conception really yes yeah. everyone we had several people who contributed their their uh on on uh one of the songs um the simple things uh a very good friend of mine that i used to play in a band with when i was 18 mm. he um he is a great country musician uh, well he's a great musician all around but he did the slide guitar on it and you know just and john had some friends from overseas that did bass and lead and guitar per from oh, New norway yes the country of norway ended up making uh, friends with someone there and he sent over some synthesizer work on um and then i, and then I yes the song and, and then i so yeah with there's people from all over the place that have sent john their recordings and like you say in today's day and age you can do this all digitally, so it's just amazing. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, when you play out, do you uh, what do you do? You, do you do covers and mix in some originals, or do you ever have an opportunity to do shows where you just do originals? I know that can be that can be a little tricky uh, finding venues that are interested in specifically original music. But how does that work? Well, that's the, luckily that's what we're doing tomorrow. At the uh, the Franco Center in Lewiston is the album release, and we're literally just going to play all the tracks one to fourteen straight through. And we've got a friend joining us called uh, Seth Pillsbury, and he's a kind of a you know, a real talented, sickeningly talented guy. <laughs> he plays guitar Young, and keyboard, so he's going to fill in for us. Good looking. Oh, you cut it out. How dare he? <laughs> <laughs> poor, poor John. So anyway, Seth is great, but but the, you're right, Matt, the, the crux of all this, and I'm sure many musicians feel the same way, you go from pub to pub, from venue to venue, and and you can maybe pepper in your originals, but people want to hear what they're familiar with, right? Yeah. So... Um, you have to find the right venue, the right radio station, such as yourself, uh, the the right the right medium for someone who appreciates and who has a following of people who appreciate local music and, and can listen. But most of the places that we play, we play a lot, and and most of the places that we play are not what you'd call a listening room. Yeah, it's more of a of a pub scene where. Oh, they love the music, but they're they're talking, they're they're chatting, they're mm -hmm. having a drink, they're they're doing what they need to do. Musicians, when they tend to write their own stuff, that's when you really see what's in their heart and soul, and it comes out. And it isn't going to be someone else's song that they've been playing, right? You, you know what I mean? So um, I, I think so. When, when people hear your your version of covers, which we we love uh, a lot of the covers that we do, but. It's not us. It's not our music. Yeah. So someone says, "Oh, I can't wait till your album comes out. I want to hear it." Well, you want to you want to really appreciate the fact that it could very well not sound like this radio song, you know? Yeah. So um, I, I just I like to put point that out because unless someone is 
is in this line of work, they only know what they hear. They only know what they're familiar with. They Very few people appreciate the fact that, oh, I'm going to go listen to these people or this person play. Right. And gee, I wonder how create, I wonder what they create. Yeah. Instead, they most people go looking for, I want them to play what I'm familiar with. Right, right. Yeah. I, I hope I hope that doesn't sound too too dark, but No, not that, no that's... no not at all. I mean that that is the reality of it and that's that's one of the, the challenges of, of what you're doing. Yes. Absolutely. So so we find venues where we're trying really hard to to uh we love doing the pubs because we do have a following there, but we're trying to slide into the venues that that promote local talent and local uh, original songs and so like john said we tomorrow night is just the perfect place for us to release this yeah and then and so and you're playing all 14 in a row you're you're doing the full album yep cool yep cool and uh it's uh it's gonna be stripped down yeah to uh to kind of how they're written really just an acoustic car and a couple of voices and i say our friend percussion. seth is gonna be playing uh keyboard. just some keyboard and a bit of uh guitar in the background and uh, really looking forward to it. It's going to be nice. Yeah, that's cool. Finally, play these songs live. Will this be? Uh, will this be streaming at all? Or are you going to record it? Or I think I do believe our our, our sound, sound guy, Mister Brad Truman, will be recording it. So cool. I'm very interested to see how that comes out. Yeah, he typically yeah. does. He he has a he has a reputation for recording his. Uh, is the places that he gets hired to go do sound for. So we're hoping that that's going to be the case. Yeah. But at least right now, if someone wants it and you're, you're in the New Hampshire area. So the idea of someone wanting us to mail them a CD may not happen mm -hmm. or, or a USB, yeah. but uh, they can go to Bandcamp and, and make this happen. Or they can reach out to us on Facebook and we'll make sure that we mail what it is that they want. Yeah. You did well to get that in there, slide that in there. <laughs> well done. Okay, well, it, it, it's how people can get yeah. the song. But yeah. if they do it before tomorrow, they're only going to get Summertown, which is the um, which is the first track on, on the CD. Okay. Uh, something else too, Matt, I, I, I know I'm doing a lot of talking here, but the the um, the USB isn't just the, the, the 14 tracks. It's a special edition recording. So it has the 14 tracks, plus it has a photo gallery, plus it has the lyrics of all the songs, plus it has liner notes behind every song, plus it has some the Summertown video that we filmed in Booth Bay Harbor, Maine. And what am I missing? And uh, the interview. Oh, and there. we have a, a, a live interview with a, a radio personality here in our area. So that is all in there uh, on the special edition version. Excellent, excellent. Which is the USB. And uh, yes, and I'm, I'm looking at the uh, website now. It's a nice, uh, I'm, I'm a website nerd. So uh, the court jesters, Maine.com. Maine is in the state of Maine, M-A-I-N-E, the court jesters, Maine.com. And is this, I assume this is the best place to go for all your uh, shows and social media and uh, all yeah, that. Yeah, that's that, that that Facebook, I think. Yeah, Facebook, we're, we're really active on that. When I say we, it's John. He's all over it. Ah. Um, <laughs> even on Twitter. Oh yeah, he now started Twitter. He calls it Twitter. <laughs> Twitter. <laughs> he called it actually. Yeah, he called it something else. But this is oh, a radio program. Right. So, right. so uh, uh, it's, <laughs> he's from England. He's from England. And they I'm have their slang the, over there. The well, only guy in the world who's on Twitter without a cell phone. Oh yeah, wow. John does not have a mobile device at all. Really? You don't? How do you? Yeah. How do you yeah. exist? Uh, <laughs> well, Twitter. You. My wife tells Twitter. me what to do. I just turn up. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Sit over there. Be quiet. Don't say anything. I know my place. <laughs> you li you literally that don't have, don't you you don't have a cell phone? No. Nope. Wow. No. The day I left England, I threw it in the bin. No and kidding. I've never never needed one since. Wow. Okay. Do you, is, I'm curious. I mean, do you feel that it's uh, is it a uh, mental health you you think it's better for your mental health to not have one because that's the number one reason i hear people will say i just think it's it's healthier not to have one it, it is nice not to have one although you kind of get penalized at, at, in today's world yeah if not having one just simple things like um, buying tickets to shows now you, you know you don't get tickets anymore but most of the time it's uh, you have to show them your qr code or something your receipt Oh, but it's all on your phone, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that that's kind of difficult. 
Yeah. Uh, my wife had one, so, you know, she, she does that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Does she no, get... but I've, I've never missed it. I've not, there's not ever been a time when I thought, God, I wish I had a cell phone. No kidding. Apart from when I was trapped down a well. Then yes. I... That would be that would be more me. I'm the one that says, gosh, I wish John had a cell phone. Right, that, right. That's, <laughs> that's, that's more me. Right. You know, we have... We, Got a telephone. It's got one of those. Uh, oh my gosh! You don't even answer that. You screen all your calls. You have to say, John, it's me. Pick up. Oh, so yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Um, but but also, fa Facebook is really good for finding out where we're playing, and we have a YouTube channel. Yep. YouTube. Yes. I was, look I was looking at that. Yep. You've got a bunch of uh, live performances there, as well as, of course, the video for Summertown, well, which when, is very when cool. When COVID happened, yes. When COVID happened, it was all of our gigs. We we had no nothing. Right. Because every place was shut down. So John, John had the great idea of let's go to the park and let's just play um, with a guitar and, and we'll record on a, on a phone. Yeah. And well, his wife's cell phone, by the way. And, um, <laughs> uh, and so so that's what's up there is, okay. is uh, stuff during COVID just to keep uh, us active mm -hmm. uh, on social media. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, so, it's yeah, fun to do. It was fun. We had a blast doing it. And we tried to stay six feet apart, you know, so yeah, we weren't offending right, anyone. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. Yeah. So so I, I Facebook, Twitter, as John calls it. Yes. Um, YouTube, the YouTube channel is a really great place to go. And we're, we're constantly putting up new stuff. The court, so. the court jesters itself, the, the, the website, I've only just started building it. So it's. Uh, oh, OK. It's, it's new, you know. It's not got all the information on there, but it's it's it. That will be the place. But we've got to, you know. Yeah. I've I got to get round to it. I like the uh, I like the color scheme and everything. It's cool. No, I, I like it. It's, yeah, thank you. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, very good, very good. Um, in a moment, uh, we're gonna close out with uh, one more song uh, to finish the segment. Uh, I'll 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 let you guys go, and then we'll play the song. But I wanted to play. Um, this song, because I just, this one kind of just spoke to me, the lyrics. It's uh, Outside My Door, and I think what is interesting about it, and maybe listeners will, will find this too when they hear it, um, I, I, th I think it's uh, what is expressed in the song is something that people can re really relate to, uh, at least at one time or another, that feeling of just not wanting to go outside into the world, and especially... You know, during COVID, when a lot of people got used to being inside, but uh, but yeah, this song. Is there anything you can tell me about this song? Because, like I said, this song in particular. I mean, I I love everything you sent. It all sounds great, but this one really connected with me. Yeah, the uh, it's funny enough. There's a I saw her today. There's a lady in where we live who who walks around. She literally walks around with a shopping bag with a life in an old lady yeah and uh it just got me it got got me thinking you know how how hard life can be sometimes and how you know some people find it hard just to step outside the door mm -hmm. which is you know where that came from and then you see this lady who's had the hardest life of anyone in the world you think well you know perhaps my life's not so bad really it's 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 and it's the same with the with the second verse as well you know the schools i mean it's it's mm -hmm life it's just moved on and changed so much as i've gotten old you know mm -hmm. older 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 <laughs> and, and the third verse really was uh, about um meeting my wife and uh wanting to be with her yeah and uh and then I have to take it one step further in my imagination how we finally get together and she dies and he's left alone. Because <laughs> right. that's kind of the way my... Uh, you know, when you look outside your twist. door and you see and you see this old man um, that everyone is afraid of, mm -hmm. right? Because he's different and strange and living outside or whatever. But the whole time, it's really he's just brokenhearted because he lost his love. Yeah. So the, the the song itself is just you're right. That's really perceptive for you to pick up on that, and and um, uh, it has a nice groove to it. Mm -hmm. And John really did well, I think, with placing the um, the words in such a way that, like you said, Matt, someone can just go, "Oh yeah, I get that." Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, very good. Well, listen, uh, we'll, we'll let you go in a moment, but before we do, you know, because we do have a lot of listeners online from other places, uh, so we might have some uh, close to where you are. Please, uh, one more time, give a, a big plug for the event tomorrow that you have uh, for the uh, release of your new uh, album. Thank you, Matt. It is at the Franco Center, which is an old Catholic church that was converted into a music venue. 
in Lewiston, Maine. It is Thursday on the 20th from 7 to 9. The tickets are 20, but if you buy your ticket ahead of time online at the FrancoCenter.org, they are 15. Okay. And you will hear again John and I live, and and you'll and with Seth, and you'll hear the, all fourteen tracks along with. Um, with then we'll do covers until our time to get kicked off the stage oh. happens. <laughs> well, very good, very good. So it's a full evening. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Well, uh, yeah, g- uh, good luck with that. I'm sure it'll go great, and uh, I I look forward to f- hearing the full album. And uh, Tina and John, uh, thank you both so much for joining us today. I'm going to play this track uh, outside my door from the court jesters, but uh, we'll let you go. Uh, In the meantime, thank you so much, and uh, we'll do this again in the future for sure. This has been wonderful. Thank Thank you, you. Matt. Thank you, and thank you, everyone, for listening. All right, you got it. we'll see you tomorrow night. There you go. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) All right. All right. Bye. Thank you both. Bye-bye. All right, very good. That was John and Tina from uh, the Court Jesters, and uh, we're going to close with this. Uh, we're going to close the segment, not the show. We have more show, but we're going to close out this segment with uh, another one of their songs. Like I said, this one really, uh, really speaks to me. This is "Outside My Door" from the Court Jesters and their uh, brand new album coming out tomorrow, called uh, "Can't Stop Now." Here it is. <laughs> Outside my door There's a lady She's downtrodden and poor And the light in her eye has faded She carries a life around Shop a bag full of not me down Just another face in the crowd Outside my door Outside my door There's a schoolyard Where the one stood swings and things This dance troll cars Playground isn't safe anymore From prying eyes to your health and safety laws It's where the child can't be kid anymore Outside my door And I know this world's alive So much more all that pain outside, gonna hide inside. Not going out of my door. Not no no Outside my door, there's an old man I think his name is Charlie, kids call him the boogeyman Used to walk in and hand with Emily You was hot right across the sea but Now she's gone and it's hard and lies empty Outside my door Outside my door Outside my door Outside my door
1000 Elm Street, Manchester's premier craft beer and gourmet pretzel bar. Tell us more, Trudy. We make our dough fresh every day. We make a variety of styles of pretzels and serve craft beer, cocktails, and a few bottles of wine. We do the traditional pretzel, and we have multiple flavors for that. We also do stuffed pretzels, pretzel sandwiches, free dessert pretzels, and pretzel knots. The Hop Knot in the Brady Sullivan Plaza at 1000 Elm Street. Bring your kitchen to life with Queen City Cabinetry, located at 87 Elm Street in the historic Sunbeam Mall in Manchester. Open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. They can be reached at 603-222-2007 or on the web at queencitycabinetrynh.com.
Welcome back, everybody, as we cruise into our final segment today of Matt Connerton Unleashed. And we are live from the studios of WMNH 95.3 FM in glorious downtown Manchester, New Hampshire. Also on Comcast 97, if you happen to be in Manchester. And hello to all of our online listeners across the nation and around the globe. You can go to my website, mattconnerton.com, for all of your live streaming options, social media links, contact info, show archives, etc., etc. Uh, today is uh, Wednesday, April 19, 2023. So nice to have you all with me. And it was so nice to have John and Tina from the Court Jesters here with us via Skype. And uh, they've got their big event uh, coming uh, up tomorrow. And uh, they've got the album comes out tomorrow. And I really ended up playing a couple of their songs. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll close with one more. I have one more to play. We'll close with, uh, at the end of the show today. Uh, they seem like, uh, really nice people, very talented. And I, I love their voices and their harmonies and all of that. Uh, Miriam Banish in the chat room said, uh, they both have nice voices. Absolutely. And, uh, John from the court jesters, uh, in the chat room said, uh, thank you, Matt, for having us on and playing our songs. Uh, my pleasure. Happy to do it. Happy to do it. And, uh, we'll, uh, we will do it again in the future. Uh, I am sure. Um, sorry if I sound uh, slightly distracted. A little bit of uh, technical. Uh, t- I'm, I'm plagued by gremlins today. Technical problems. Uh, but uh, <laughs> what can you do? Technology will fail us at times. Uh, but, uh, of course, if you're listening to the, the podcast version after, everything will sound nice and smooth. Um, let's see. I think that we should... Uh, oh, that's an interesting thing. We just, we only have a, a, a little bit of time remaining today. So I have a quick story we can look at, but, uh, 603-250-6007, 603-250-6007 is the studio line. If you'd like to chime in with anything, you can also, uh, text us at 617-917-4476. I'm on social media at Matt Connerton. Uh, you can, uh, Email me, Matt, at mattconnerton.com. And, of course, you can interact and opine in the Facebook live chat. Uh, But the best thing to do so that we can hear and enjoy your dulcet tones is give us a call at 603-250-6007. Melanie La Liberty from the great state of Vermont joins us in the chat room and says, Hey, guys, can you start over? Uh, If only we could travel back in time. Uh, By the way, uh, Andrea Paquin will be our guest on uh, Friday. Uh, She'll be joining us in the second hour of Friday's program. And uh, she's going to, or I'm sorry, is it Anna Paquin? Make sure I get her name right. Oh, no, it is Andrea. Anna Paquin, I think, is an actress, right? No, Andrea Paquin. I I had it right the first time. She'll be joining us Friday. And I believe she is bringing in her acoustic guitar and will play a few songs for us in the second hour. So we look forward to that. Uh, She's... um, pretty well known online in the area as a uh, i i feel like i've been hearing her name for a long time so it'll be great to finally meet her and she'll come in and play for us fridays of course very busy around here uh we've got this program then granted state of mind hosted by rob azevedo and Polly stone and then friday night from 8 to 11 p.m we have retro spectrum radio with Polly c uh right here on wmnh and uh some other things going on friday as well uh, Rebecca Termel will be playing at the Hopknot Friday night. They're usually doing live music on Saturdays now, but uh, they do have a Friday night appearance. Uh, Rebecca Termel uh, from 7 to 9 uh, p.m., a uh, very talented singer-songwriter, will be at the Hopknot, our amazing sponsor. And also another uh, big event happening Friday just up the street at Diz's Cafe. Uh, a great event. Uh, Peter White of The Morning Show with Peter White will be there. He is the celebrity restaurateur, I believe is uh, what they call uh, what he'll be doing there. And that is uh, an event from 5 to 9 p.m. Yes, yeah, celebrity restaurateur Peter White. And, um, oh, it's funny they spelled it wrong on this. <laughs> Oops. Uh, at uh, Dizzy's Cafe from 5 to 9 p.m. And, uh uh 10% of the uh of Peter's special menu uh all food and drinks will uh, be donated to the nonprofit Hope NH Hope is H O P E helping our pupils excel uh the great Matt Cushane uh, that's his organization that he started and of course uh every year uh he and Peter work together on the Miracle on Elm Street event and um but they're going to be at Dizzy's Cafe Friday night from 5 to 9 p.m. Uh, so stop in there. Order something from Peter's special menu. So very good. That is, I think the address is 860 Elm Street. 
Let's see. All right. We are, yeah, we're, we're almost out of time. I just happened to see this pop up though. And uh, the reason this got my attention, I wanted to get into the Dominion settling with uh, Fox News and all that, but we just don't have time to get into that today. But we will before the end of the week. Smartmatic's lawsuit is up next. It's going to cost uh, Fox even more money. No, but uh, yesterday on the show, and I don't even remember exactly why, but John Hopwood was here. It was during our conversation with Ed Opperman. And the subject of Wired Magazine came up. And, of course, uh, you can also find them online. I believe it's Wired.com. And I just happened to see this pop up on Mediaite. Wired journalist suspended on Twitter. Twitter, what we were also discussing, or uh, John uh, from uh, the court jesters called it something else that I probably can't say on the air. Uh, so uh, it, it's, it, it just seems like the universe is directing us toward this story. Wired journalists suspended on Twitter after reporting on Matt Walsh's account being hacked. Uh, it says here, Twitter has suspended an account of a journalist who wrote an article about Matt Walsh's Twitter account being hacked. Del Cameron, a senior policy writer at Wired, had his account permanently suspended after he shared an article where he interviewed the hacker who infiltrated Matt Walsh's account. Right after posting the article, Cameron's account was suspended. In the explanation, the social media platform said the reason was the violation of Twitter rules. It states specifically for, quote, violating our rules against distribution of hacked material, unquote. Now, my first instinct when I see or I hear that is um, it's not d d using Twitter to disseminate material that was uh, acquired through hacking. It's an article about someone's, someone's account being hacked, right? But what that reminds me of immediately is, you know, I've complained on the show about how sometimes I'll get in trouble with YouTube for discussing certain subjects where I'm not actually violating YouTube's policies. In fact, I'm actually speaking out against the very people who say things that do violate YouTube's policies in the two instances and the two subjects that I'm thinking of, which I'm not even going to uh, mention because I would like to be able to put today's show up on YouTube. Um, but... Uh, but, you know, a bot detects that and thinks that I'm violating YouTube policies. So my assumption here is a bot that serves as a moderator on Twitter because they fired the actual Elon Musk. He got rid of the actual moderation team, the human beings that oversaw that. So I assume it's just bots that do it now, right? A bot probably saw the article about hacking and saw the word hack and said, oh, we got to... We have to censor this and uh, uh, kill this account. Uh, it says here, Twitter's explanation was shared by Stephen Monticelli, an investigative reporter for the Texas Observer. Uh, Walsh's Twitter was breached on Tuesday night by a hacker who goes by the alias Doomed. According to Cameron's story on Wired, Walsh's account appeared to be hacked when, it was, when its feed started sharing out-of-character tweets. Ooh, this ought to be good. I'm not a fan of Matt Walsh. I'm going to enjoy this. Uh, the tweets were digs at his Daily Wire colleague, Ben Shapiro, that said, quote, You know what you did. You are a closeted homosexual and hide behind being Jewish, unquote. Wow, that is, uh, yes, uh, I don't imagine uh, Matt Walsh would actually tweet that. Boy, I was uncomfortable even reading that. Uh, other tweets were jabs at Joe Rogan that called him something that I'm not even going to say on the air and accused British kickboxer Andrew Tate of kidnapping and, well, kidnapping girls in Romania. Uh, boy, these, uh, some of these get pretty blue. I'm not even going to read these. Uh, the hacker shared with Dell uh, that he was able to get to Walsh's account using a SIM swapping technique. It involves the hacker tricking a cellular provider. See, we were talking about cell phones with John from the court jesters. I'm telling you, the universe has uh, guided us to this story. It involves a hacker tricking a cellular provider into switching the victim's cell phone number to a SIM card he controls. Doomed claimed that an insider helped him with the hack? Really? The hacker was apparently able to reach Wal Walsh's Google and Microsoft accounts along with the commentator's W-2 tax form. The hacker said that he had no bad intentions. 
Uh, Doomed said, quote, the intent was to make funny tweets as Matt Walsh likes to trigger people. We caused no financial harm, threatened anyone, nor ruined anything. It was merely uh, a few silly words on social media, unquote. Well, there you go. Gotta watch out for those hackers. All right, we are out of time, my friends. Uh, thank you again so much to uh, the Court Jesters for joining us today. I really enjoy their music, and we will close with one more of their songs. And uh, we'll try to get to all the Dominion lawsuit stuff tomorrow. That's a big subject, and we're going to dig in uh, because it's not just Dominion. Like I said, Smartmatic is up next. That's the next uh, battle that Fox has to uh, fight or choose not to fight but uh, settle which is probably what they'll do. <laughs> Melanie says in the chat room, it was a ginormous settlement. Yeah, something like $727 million, something like that. Probably cheaper to just uh, tell the truth, engage in something called journalism. But yeah, what do I know? <clears throat> I'm not Rupert Murdoch. I What do I know? Okay, we will uh, conclude with that. If you miss any part of today's show, it will be up in just a little bit at WMNHradio.org. And my website, mattconnerton.com. And here's one more track from the Court Jesters to close out today's show. This is called I Drive. We'll leave you with this. Don't forget, be back bright and early, 7 a.m. for the morning show with Peter White. And uh, that's it for me. I'll talk to you all a little bit later. Bye, everybody. (laughs) 